Okay, we're gonna be changing the radiator on this truck today. It's leaking at the seam. So we're gonna go ahead and change it so that way we don't have any coolant leaking and we can drive it daily and not worry about it. First steps to do is to really go through and start the draining. Um, let me find the drain and I'll show you guys that. Um, before we do that, I'm gonna explain what we gotta do up top here. First, we gotta do is go through and undo the bolt there. We got a bolt there, down below it a little bit. So you got one there, got one there. So we could take them off. And then you're also going to have the lower radiator clip down here for the lower hose. We're gonna have to pop that hose off. We're gonna have to take these off up here, there, there, and there. We're gonna have to take this off. And we're gonna have to pull this coolant reservoir, the washer fluid reservoir out of the way so we can get to the bolts down below it. So once we get them done, then we can take the two bolts off up here. You got one bolt there and you got one bolt there. So you take them both off, then you should be able to pull the radiator out in theory. So let me find the drain and I'll show you guys where the drain is and all that. All right, here's a new radiator. I bought a TYC radiator. Um, I like them, they work pretty good. They're usually pretty good quality parts. I haven't had too many of an issues with them. Um, but you, as you can see, you got, well, I'll show you this side. This is the side where the top hose is up there. You can see the upper bolt I was talking about. You're gonna have to take that bolt out bottom sits in there the drain is going to be on the driver's side so you can turn that and it will drain out somewhere i think maybe through the bottom of this maybe it drains through i'm not really sure well oops sorry i think it drains through the radiator's post is where it drains through so we can pull that off and i see yeah you got a hole through there and it's supposed to have a hole through i guess that but it doesn't so might might put a hole in that just to make sure I can get my ready to drain down the line. But anyway, as you can see, these are usually pretty good. They got the clips in them already, new clips for each side. So and they're just usually good quality radiator. So, but that is going to be your radiator for it. So you can see where your new one mounts and all that stuff. So, so the drain is on the driver's side. Is on the driver's side. Which you. Look down here. Um, there it is, right there. There's your drain. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a bucket, put a bucket under here, and start draining that down. Okay guys, with getting this off, what I found to do is to take a long flat blade screwdriver like this, or you can use a Phillips even, it doesn't have to be flat blade. Just take a long screwdriver, wedge it in between the fan shroud and that, so you gotta push them two little indents out they got lock and lock and hole in there so once you push them two out then you can lift your coolant bottle up and get it out of the way so now i can go ahead and disconnect it and hopefully i might just pull the whole bottle out maybe get it out of the way so, so that's how you can get that loose okay i've gone through i pulled the two bolts out of this side which allowed that to unbolt there i pulled the bottle out which then i undid the two bolts that i could reach there then you got to lift the rad the shroud up the black plastic piece so that way you can get it unclamped there so we get that to focus there we go get it out of that holder and out of that holder which the new radiator has so we don't have to worry about that but once you get them out then you can push this kind of back and get this out of the way so now the only thing i got left to do is i got to undo that bolt that bolt and the lower hose so they do make pliers for doing them that you could drop down you squeeze the pliers and it squishes the clamps. Uh, do be careful with the with these type of clamps like this because they can come off the hose so be careful with them not to lose an eye. So I like to use channel locks when I do them. I don't have the right clamp pliers even though I told you guys about them. But you got to get down in here and get, get that one down in there. See it way down in there. So that's my bottom hose that I gotta get off. So I gotta get that clamp off and then I can do it. If I can't get it that way, the next option I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and pull it off there, off the engine, off the water pump, and I'll just uh, see if I can pull the radiator out with the hose, maybe. That might be what I have, might have to do. I'll see when I get to that point. So but that's how you can do it. We got the radiator out. What I had to do, guys, was I had to lift it up and unbolt it so then i can get this hose off on this side you see where they have the clamp positions you really can't get to it easily so i unbolted the radiator lifted it up and i could do it if 
you guys are doing this and you're gung ho if you want you can go ahead and clean your uh clean all the oil and stuff off of it for me i'm not going to really worry about it it's a truck i run it i use it this oil here is actually probably coming from this breather here there's supposed to be a catch can down there right there so that catch can probably has a hole in it and i think you're supposed to empty it every so often and it never gets done on this because it gets drove so uh, my other trucks don't have the catch can anymore because they came loose and hit the belt and got destroyed so before you guys go ahead and put your new radiator in compare it to your old one to make sure it's all the same as you guys can see the clip clip mounting spot you got a clip clip mounting spot radiator fill radiator fill drain drain clip 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 and they're offset like that and the holes there so it's amazing when you order this stuff online how many you actually get wrong um I've been, I ordered, I think, two or three, three, I think, online. They're supposedly for the diesel truck, and probably what it was was there's an issue in their system, and it said it was for a 5.9 diesel when it was actually for a 5.9 gas engine. Because um, there are different radiators. Diesel needs the bigger radiator. So that's probably what it was in their system. And I actually got this one from Advanced Auto. They had it in stock, so I was able to pick it right up there. But it was significantly more expensive than the other radiators I was trying to get offline. Um, it comes out to be about a third of a price more expensive than it was the other ones I was trying to get offline. But I went in the store and walked out with it and I had it so I could do it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and set the radiator in here. Set it in there and get it on. I'm going to, when I set it down, I'm going to put this in there. And when you put it down, you want to watch and make sure you don't skim the said bolts up here because you got a bolt there so you want to make sure you don't hit that bolt and rip it so that's the only thing i can really think to tell you guys if you're doing this and you haven't done a water pump now would be the time to do a water pump so you get right to your water pump it's very easy to get to you got two bolts on it comes right out um i've changed this water pump before so that's why i'm not gonna bother doing it now um or if you need to do your fan clutch now would be a good time to do it since you're right there and you can get to it you don't have to worry about damaging anything um, if you want to take the shroud out, you can probably do it now with the radiator out. If you didn't have the radiator out, you'd have to undo it with the tools. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and get this put back in and get it back together. Okay, guys. As you guys can see, I got the radiator set in place. Before I bolted it down, what I went ahead and did, it was hooked up that hose, the bottom hose down there. I hooked that up, and I put the clamp back on there. So, now that... that hose is on there because that's a pain to get to down there so with the radiator loose you can move it around a little bit and put it back on there so i did that first the next thing now that i got that hose on there i put the two bolts in up here i put that bolt in and that bolt in so that way the radiator's now bolted back in here so it doesn't move the next thing to do is to go through and get your as you can see the little clip down there so you want to lift up your shroud and get your shroud where it's gonna set into that clip. Okay, you'll probably need two hands to do that. So I'm probably gonna have to stop video on this and pop that in, then I can show you guys. Okay guys, as you guys can see, I got the bottom caught in there. So it's now caught in there. Now the next thing to do, and this is something I didn't mention when I was taking it apart, I probably should have, but there's these little clips, these two little clips here that, um, that you put in there on the top of it. So what you do is you take this and you can push it up against that and then the clips go on there to hold it. So I'm gonna need two hands to do that, but that's what them little clips do. They're on there when you first start, as you can see, one probably goes there, one's designed to go there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them clips on there and then I'm gonna put the top bolts, the four bolts to hold the shroud to the radiator. I'm gonna put them back in and we'll go from there. You guys can see I got the clips in there. It's holding it in there. So it makes it easy to put the bolts back in. It holds it on there and attaches it pretty good and just kind of holds it. But you got to make sure to put your four four bolts back in and hook them up. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt them bolts back in. Um, and then I'm going to put the washer bottle back in. When you put that back in, all you got to do is make sure you get the bottom, the bottom down there, the peg in there, and these two top pegs in. The top pegs, and it slides right down. And your coolant reservoir, I'm going to go ahead and put that back in. As you guys can see, you got a hook there and a hook down there. And then you got the one spot down there that the pig sits in. So I'm going to go ahead and put them both back in. Once After I bolt 
the fan shroud back up. Uh, you gotta have it bolted back up because the washer bottle covers your two bolts here. Okay guys, so what I've done so far is to give you a recap of what I've got. You know, I got the coolant bottle popped back down, locked in there, and I put the radiator hose back up here, back on. Okay, which isn't that big of a deal. It's, it just slides and pops the uh, coolant bottle, or not coolant, the windshield washer fluid bottle. The coolant bottle on this side, you, you slide and pop it. You gotta toy with it up to get the bottom flat pin aligned. And then once you get that aligned, then you can just push the bottle down. Remember to hook up your overflow. So the only thing left I gotta do now is I gotta hook up, not hook up, but reinstall the cable, the battery cable, as you guys can see here, which will go back up here onto these four points four studs so I could put that back on and then I just got to put cool in it um, with this thing you don't have to really worry about bleeding it just doing a radiator unit drain the coolant system completely down the engine still had coolant in it and the heater core still had coolant in it um, the best way to deal with that is if let's say you lost an unknown amount of coolant driving and you need to fix it and you don't know how much coolant to put back in there you can pre-mix it or buy pre-mix you can do it that way or let's say you flush the system out where you have unknown amount of water in the block or the heater core, for example. So just go ahead and dump a straight coolant in there and then add water accordingly. You know, if let's say the coolant system, I don't know what the total is on this one. Um, it's probably, I think like six gallons maybe. Um, so go ahead and look it up, verify and take whatever the max coolant capacity is, divide that by half and then put pre-diluted in that you know if it's let's say for example six gallons put three gallons of undiluted in there and then add water accordingly because so undiluted 100 percent will be fine so you just add water to get it to the right level if that makes sense so um but anyway i'm gonna go ahead and put these bolts back on fill the coolant and we're good to go thanks for watching hey guys if you like these videos please subscribe comment follow um, I'd love to see some more subscribers on there. So, hey, share the channel. I'd love to see that, and I'd love to do more stuff. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask, and I'll try to answer them as best as I can.